Hello and welcome to Money Life News and Views. I'm Devashish Basu. A few days ago, online food delivery platform Zomato acquired what is called a quick commerce company, which is those which deliver something or the other in 10 minutes. And it's called Blinkit, which is earlier Grofers. And the deal was about 4,447 crore, about $568 million in an all stock deal, which means the Blinkit shareholders are going to get Zomato shares. The deal has raised a lot of eyebrows. For one, Zomato has just about 1,250 crore on its balance sheet and it's badly hemorrhaging. It lost 750 crore of cash from its operations last year, that is to 2021-22 uh, alone. Second, the acquisition comes at a time when Zomato's own future is cloudy. Last year, it reported a loss of almost 1,100 crore and under the current business model is unlikely to make any profits soon. If so, its own existence would be in doubt and unless it can find new cash to carry on the same way as it is doing. Third, there are various conflicts of interest in the Blinkit deal. Well, the CEO of Blinkit, this company that Zomato acquired, Albinder Dhinsa, is an ex-CFO of Zomato and the spouse of Zomato co-founder Akriti Chopra. Zomato owned more than 9% equity in Blinkit itself. Zomato and its CEO, which, which is Deepinder Goel, was himself a shareholder of Blinkit to the extent of about 10% until it sold that stake to Tiger Global last year. Finally, the valuation of Blinkit is based on just two months of unaudited results. When any small-time valuer insists on audited results to even start the valuation work. Now, none of this would matter if Zomato was unlisted. Unlisted companies are free to do whatever they like, whatever their board of directors are okay with and whatever their investors are all right with. Now, they can invest in uncompetitive businesses, they can, you know, they can lose boatloads of money, nobody's there to tell them anything to it. It's all between their small batch of investors and the board. They are also judged by metrics which have nothing to do with profitability. I'm talking about tech startups that their private equity investors set for them, which is one of the main being customer acquisition and revenue growth at any cost, literally any cost. The fixation with growth is so overpowering that some overambitious founders and the backers have even been known to fudge their books. The end objective is somehow to grow the business to a certain size so that it can be publicly listed and everybody can exit. In that process, charismatic founders creating 10 times growth while losing money like water get an easy pass. Look at the story of unlisted Ola. According to a report by Money Control, between December 2018 and January 2019, Bhavish Agarwal, who is the CEO and founder of Ola, purchased a 92.5% stake in Ola Electric for just 92,500 rupees. When it was very well no known that electric vehicles are the thing of the future and Ola is going to get into that. It's all adjacencies. They were a car rental company, they were getting into uh, uh, transportation. The rest of that was held by Ola in return for permitting the use of its brand name. A month later, just a month later, Ola Electric raised 300 crores of 42 million from Matrix Partners, Ratan Tata, Tiger Global at an undisclosed valuation. Five months later, in July, Ola Electric announced that it had raised $250 million from SoftBank at a valuation of $1 billion. All right. So here was a company which was valued at just about $2,700 or so suddenly in six months started getting valued at 1 billion. Today, both Ola and Ola Electric are valued about 5 billion following the launch of its electric scooters. Mr. Agarwal owns about 5% of Ola, but about 32% of Ola Electric after the dilutions. You may wonder why Ola Investors, that is the main company, allowed Bhavish Agarwal to walk away with such a large stake which grew so rapidly in such a short period. Wouldn't they have wanted a part of it? But then it's between them, as I said. Unlisted companies can do whatever they want to. It's between their own shareholders and the board of directors and the founder. That's their internal matter. The point is, if Ola was publicly listed, it would not have been able to do this. 
this is brazen self dealing by mr agarwal unfortunately startup founders don't seem to be mindful of the fact that once listed every corporate action will be judged from the point of view of fairness to retail or minority shareholders as in the case of ola and zomato self dealing starts with the structure of ownership take the case of ptm which got listed last year in which founder vijay shekhar sharma holds 15% but he also holds 51% in paytm bank which is privately listed that is un- which is privately that is unlisted paytm pays around 900 crore annually to the unlisted paytm payment bank majority owned by the founder it's one of the best examples of conflict of interest and self-serving related party transactions again this would have been up to the investors of the two entities when they were both listed but now paytm is listed so such conflicts have to be resolved otherwise it really looks self serving the second source of self dealing in startups is the scandalous pricing of initial public offering as long as they are unlisted the valuation of startups is completely driven by an approach that can be characterized by growth at any cost in the la la land inhabited by visionary founders backed by deep pocketed adventurous investors it's all right for a blinkit to lose 637 crore to earn a revenue of just 177 crore i repeat those numbers again they lost 637 crore to earn a revenue of 177 crore now why would they do something like this because they want to go and ultimately dump the stock in the public market when they do their ipos startups continue to value their business as if it is another round of mad money fundraising they just think that they deserve that valuation now from another set of shareholders which is public shareholders this is why ptm the largest ever ipo in the indian market priced at 200 2150 a share open for trading at 9% down on 18 november it then dropped vertically ending the day at 27.6% down at the lower circuit a few days after the issue the chief financial officer of ptm claimed we could have priced the ipo much higher but we decided not to we wanted to leave value for investors on the table last friday atm closed at 657 down 70% from the issue price as i said it was another round of mad money for atm and the cfo perhaps expected the price to soar even further in the public market Now startups don't care that the mad money funding comes to a hard stop after IPO. Shareholders of listed companies believe in a different approach to valuation. It must be based on profitability and cash flows and all eyes always be on corporate governance. As a listed entity, corporate actions have to take the interests of all shareholders into account, especially the minority shareholders. Now, all the three examples that I've given shows that startups are still not getting this simple fact thanks for watching and if you liked it please do subscribe and share the video